Takedown at the Mollywan Black site is the first of the two takedowns added within Borderlands 3. While it released almost four years ago now, I wanted to try my hand at making the most comprehensive guide yet as a resource to help new and returning players, and maybe even provide info that some longtime players might not be aware of. Mollywan Takedown contains two sections of mobbing, a mini boss, a mid boss, and Borderlands 3's first raid boss, along with a wide variety of generally quite powerful gear. In this guide, I will be walking you through the stages of this takedown, showing you how to defeat each of the bosses, showing some tricks to speed up your times, along with going over some very powerful and easy to get gear, which can help you when attempting to take on Molly Wan Takedown. Before we get into it though, let's quickly go over Normal Takedown versus True Takedown Mode. Normal is your average experience and how Molly Wan Takedown originally launched. True Takedown Mode is a far more difficult challenge, scaling the enemy spawns and health as if you had four players in your lobby. In short, what this means is enemies are tankier and there are much more of them spawning. If this is your first time running Molly Wan Takedown, or if you're just trying to farm, stick with normal as dedicated drop rates also stay exactly the same between the two. True Takedown Mode should mostly be seen as a challenge mode to really test your build. Next, we'll walk through the actual takedown experience and talk about the stages of the takedown and enemy types which can be encountered. Molly Wan Takedown as a whole can be broken down into six stages which we'll call Entry, Kraken, Valkyries, Pre-Bridge, Bridge, and Wotan. These stages all have varying enemy types which you'll encounter. General enemies which appear across a majority of these stages are Heavies, Troopers, and their variants such as Shield, Blink, and Jet, and War Dogs, all of which can come in their badass variants. During Entry, the Bridge, and Wotan, Death Spheres will also spawn, and in Entry, there is plenty of Ratch. While these share their models and attacks, with the normal variants of these enemies, these are specifically the Spec Ops variants exclusive to Molly Wan Takedown that hit harder and are tankier. A vast majority of health bars in Molly Wan Takedown are shield and flesh, meaning having a good source of shock and incendiary damage will be quite the help. The heavies that spawn can however be elementally immune, which means that you do want to make sure that you have some more elemental coverage, especially because Kraken, the Valkyries, and Wotan are all shield and armor along with the Death Spheres and War Dog, so Corrosive or Cryo is also quite necessary, but do keep in mind that Wotan specifically also resists cryo damage. Breaking it down by stage, let's start with entry, where you will initially find a few troopers with a lot of ratch. These ratch, however, can be entirely ignored as our only goal is to get that gate open. The only requirement to do so is killing the three mounted troopers up on top of the wall above the gate. Once they're killed, the gate will open and a couple of war dogs and death spheres will emerge. These are also not necessary to kill, but it can definitely be beneficial. We now enter stage two, Kraken. Here you will be fighting through a horde of our general enemies. You'll have to kill a lot of these, but keeping an eye on the large door will tell you when you've slaughtered enough and may continue on. Walking towards the door will summon a shield sphere, a few more enemies, and most importantly, our mini boss, Kraken. Kraken can usually be dispatched pretty quickly, however, his crit spawn is on his back. If you want to hit it, you'll have to wait for him to fully exit through the shield. After he's down to around half HP, he will gain a shield of his own, but this can mostly be ignored as it's not very strong. Stage 2.5 is the vending machine. Do not look at it. The game will probably crash. Stage 3 is our mid boss, the Valkyries. You'll take on three big Molly One mechs with waves of enemies between, but I'll we'll talk about this more in the actual bosses section. After Valkyries, we move on to Pre-Bridge. The only required mobbing throughout this section is this first corner area you come across. If you kill all the enemies and this door is yet to open, shoot at the top of this roof. Sometimes enemies will get stuck up there and this will bring them down. From there, you can run through the rest of this area and up to the final section of mobbing. With enough move speed, you can even jump this gap for style points. From there, though, we move on to... The bridge can be one of the first major roadblocks, as for many players, it will be the most prohibitive section of mobbing yet, having possibly one of the highest enemy densities out of any section of the game before this, along with being the return of our friends, the Death Spheres. Make sure you're taking out the Death Spheres ASAP, as they dish out a deceivingly large amount of damage from quite the distance and will consistently down you if left unattended. You'll also want to try to avoid letting the dogs get too close, as their static fields will slow you down a hell of a lot. Which which can leave you open as quite an easy target. Be sure to not overextend into the second half of the bridge if you aren't prepared to be taking on even more enemies as that will aggro more of them onto you. Eventually, the waypoint on your map will update and you will make your way towards the door. On normal takedown, two final elemental heavies will spawn while on true takedown there will be four. Now let's talk about our bosses. First up is the Valkyries. Valkyrie fight is incredibly choreographed and can be broken down quite easily. When you first enter through the elevator, they will all be active and on the center platform. 
They will all jump away and to their perches after one of their shields is fully depleted. However, this does mean that you can damage every shield preemptively if you so choose. After they jump, a wave of mobs will be spawned. Their spawn location is randomized. However, you will encounter each spawn only once during a fight. There's four spawn locations, which we'll call truck, center, upper, and corner. Truck spawns a wave of basic troopers. Center is assault troopers and can contain a badass. Upper is a mix of troopers and heavies, which can also all be badass. And corner is only war dogs with only one ever being a badass. As for the Valkyries, you will fight one-on-one -on -one with each of them before finally taking them on all at once. They will always come down in the same order, Sigdrifa, Hildur, and Rota. Sigdrifa will jump down to the right and stay quite stationary while launching barrages of shock damage. She can usually be taken out quite easily as she's pretty immobile and does little to cover her torso, which are all of these mech's crit spots. Hildur is a Reaper-type mech equipped with a scythe and radiation damage, jumping down from the left. While she does have a ranged attack, generally she'll try to get close to hit the player, meaning splash damage can be dangerous to use versus her if she gets too close. Rota is an Arbalest with quite the suite of abilities. She deals cryo damage but deploys Isas Augus, which are drones that will hover along the top of the arena. These can be incredibly useful for second wins. Rota will jump down to the platform directly below the center platform. She'll stand still for a few moments, which is your best opportunity to absolutely lay into her. Once she gets moving, she moves fast. However, don't worry, she does stop at times to launch her attack, which does leave her quite open. Each Valkyrie will fight until half of their armor bar is depleted, at which point they will return to their perch and you will take on another wave of enemies. The next Valkyrie will jump down after a set amount of time, however will come down quicker if you kill the entirety of the wave as that triggers them to immediately jump. After you have your 1v1 with each Valkyrie, all three of them will come down at once to fight and that is when you can finally take them out. And now for the big man himself, the final boss. Wotan the Invincible. Wotan is a massive Maliwan mech which will periodically surround himself with a large spinning shield. This shield is completely impenetrable by any projectiles and will cause massive damage to the player if they step inside of it. Within his arena, he will also be constantly summoning the enemies which you have been encountering throughout this takedown. He has two major phases of his fight, with the first phase having three minor stages, so let's try to break this down and hopefully not get too confusing. When you enter the arena, Wotan will be surrounded by his first shield with large holes along the bottom of it. These holes can be shot through to break his pretty damn squishy shield. Once the shield falls, a small crit spot will pop out of his back, very similar to Kraken's. Shoot this to quickly move on to his next stage. Wotan will regain his shield, this time having a large strip open to attack. Once again, you'll want to shoot through this to take it down. His shield will drop, and once again, he'll be open to attack, though he will jump away to one of the higher pillars. After dropping his health low enough, he'll jump back down to be shot at once more before moving on to stage 3. This time, he will have two shields, the outer of which is completely surrounded. You'll have to enter the outer shield shield to shoot through the large damp of the inner. Once the first shield depletes, the outer will disappear and the inner will fully surround Wotan. Using the launch pads within one of the pillars will launch you high enough to shoot into the top of Wotan's shield and destroy it. This brings him into phase two, where after breaking the last of his shields, Wotan will split into two halves. The better half, or the top half, will take to the skies and fire down towards the player, while the lower half will begin to jump around, launching out waves of damaging orbs from wherever it lands. Either half can be taken out first. The better half doesn't have a crit spot, or at least doesn't have a very accessible crit spot, while the lower half's crit spot is protected by a very squishy shield around the brain. Once the shield is broken, you have full access to crit. It is also worth noting that this shield can provide a second wind. After taking out the lower half, it will break down into Wotan's brain and the four legs. The legs, before despawning, can be shot at and broken for more loot along with the brain, giving Wotan seven total loot drops, including the better and the lower halves. We're not done with Wotan, however, as with more practice and better builds, you can cut your Wotan Wotan time down significantly. In phase 1, stage 2, if you burst him down to his threshold immediately before he jumps, after he lands you'll be able to burst his second threshold as well. This immediately sends him into stage 3 while atop the pillar, meaning you can shoot directly up and under his shield to bring him into phase 2. This isn't super consistent however, and if you do still find yourself in phase 1, stage 3, we can abuse health gating to enter his shield and quickly break it. As long as you are above half HP, health gate will save you from immediately going down. Or alternatively, you can just do an enough damage to completely fucking evaporate both of his shields from this plane of existence in one shot. There's also a bit of a bug where if you one-shot Wotan's better half, sometimes it can fall to the ground in a bug state where the body is gone but the enemy is actually still alive. If this happens, look around to find this weird floating thing and shoot at it. Eventually it'll explode and the better half will properly die. Now let's talk about some easy to obtain gear which can help get your takedown run started. While plenty of gear works and varies 
greatly between builds, I would just like to highlight some standout gear that can work very well in a majority of builds and is very easy to obtain for the average player. For those with DLC, the Revolter is perhaps the strongest shield in the game, especially if you're playing a character that can easily abuse the Action Stole Start Shield Break Anointment. This gives a constant uptime of 200% shock damage and 50% fire rate. The Soul Render from DLC 2 and the Light Show from DLC 3 are also both quite easy to obtain while dishing out lots and lots of damage. If you do not have access to DLC gear, however, the base game also has quite a lot to work with. The Hellwalker is an incredibly high damage shotgun which deals incendiary damage and is very good against most mobbing sections of the takedown, while the Butcher is another very good shotgun with very high overall DPS along with the ability to come in any element. The Hive is perhaps the best launcher for mobbing and perhaps makes the absolute easiest work of the bridge by just spamming shots out into the air. And if you've gone ahead and climbed into Mayhem 6 or above already, you also have access to the Kozen and the Multitap, both of which are very easily accessible and shred through large groups of enemies. You also gain access to the Backburner and Plaguebearer, which can make short work of pretty much any boss. But yeah, I mean, with that all being said, that is how you take on Molly One Takedown. Hopefully this video helped you out or taught you something new. If you enjoyed it, please definitely consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, all that. And if you'd like, you can check out the links in the description, which will take you to my Twitch channel and my Discord server. But with that all being said, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one.